I have the honor to open this first edition with a little keynote uh, or a little story. So it's a little story that I want to bring um, before we kick this party off. Um, yeah, about how we generally fear the unknown uh, and the revolutionary technology uh, that is now evolving at a rapid speed. Um, it's going faster and faster. We're jumping from hype to hype. But I think, and I want to all encourage you as business leaders, brand owners, marketeers, whatever you are, to embrace the unknown because it will only go faster and faster in the next coming years, I guess. And it's important to um, yeah, embrace innovation in your business and marketing strategy. My name is Peter Valdeugenhagen. Yes, that's me. Um, I'm one of the founders of Yonder. We are with three. Um, and we are with the whole team, of course. We are headquartered in Belgium, but we are working um, yeah, across the, the globe, actually. Um, and we are also the company behind, or, yeah, or the, the hosting company behind this summit. Um, Yonder, uh, a small introduction about our company before we jump into the story that I would like to tell you. We are headquartered, uh, yeah, so we are bo born uh, in 2015 uh, as a global innovation production studio, but basically we use immersive technology um, to help brands or our clients to build real connections with their target audience. And that often results in mixed reality. We're now talking about spatial computing these days, virtual worlds, and basically Everything that, um, in terms of content production that is related to 3D uh, interactivity, gamification, uh, and immersive experiences. But actually, it all started uh, with this headset in 2014, it was. Um, there was a company passing by our office um, from our first company, where we already had a company in branding web and digital experiences and video. They put on the headset on our faces um and on my face and i was completely blown away by the experience and immediately we saw the opportunity um of virtual reality uh, for our clients and for our business because um we believed together with um facebook back then because uh, facebook was all over uh, the internet in 2014 um, that they acquired oculus uh, oculus which we now know as the quest the meta quest headsets they acquired it in 2014 and that was also the moment that we start uh, our journey in immersive technologies and virtual reality and we yeah we pushed the hype of virtual reality for a very long time 360 video um to 3d uh, pre-rendered vr experiences six dot experiences and so on so i think yeah we do believe the hype and as an innovation production studio i think it's important for us of course it's our existence uh, that we embrace the unknown uh, that we embrace new technologies and that we know how to turn them into mesmerizing brand experiences. Uh, and if you look back at the past few years, uh, we can see that there were always, uh, that there was always like one particular hype that was king or queen of the hype cycle. Um, and I think, yeah, the hype cycle, uh, most of you guys are familiar with the Gardner hype cycle. But anyway, it's a graphical representation of the market introduction of new technology. Uh, it starts with a technology trigger, then it goes to the, the, the second stage, the peak of inflated expectations. So the moment that, that everybody wants to do something with it, that it's like, yeah, king of the hype cycle or queen of the hype cycle, then it goes all the way down to the trough of disillusionment. The moment it disappears uh, from the media, but behind the scenes, um, some people uh, quit the business or they keep on building uh, until we go towards the slope of enlightenment and then it'll ultimately reach the the yeah the mass adoption the plateau of productivity but i want to focus on the peak of inflated expectations because the past few years there were like um every year we had another an, another hype or another technology that was king uh, of the or, or yeah topping the hype uh, the hype cycle and i think we can agree that for 2021 it was nfts we saw a lot of brands experimenting, uh, innovating, uh, doing just stuff, random stuff based out of FOMO, fear of missing out with NFTs, um, with digital art, with loyalty systems. It was pure experimentation, I guess. Um, some people made a lot of money with it. A lot of people lost a lot of money uh, with it. But it doesn't mean that it's out of the media now today, uh, that it doesn't exist anymore and that the basic principles of this um yeah blockchain technology doesn't make sense at all maybe we'll see it back or coming back in the future because 
in 2022, I think, yeah, the end of 2021, there was a certain guy in Silicon Valley that decided to change his name from Facebook to Meta. So I think we can all agree that 2022 was the year of the metaverse and also yeah, a bit of 2023, of course. Um, so all of a sudden, the metaverse was the hype. A lot of big brands started experimenting with building worlds on Roblox, on Fortnite, on Spatial, um, on any other platform, Decentraland, the Sandbox. Um, and we were building virtual worlds since 2020, actually. So for us, not a lot changed. Uh, we were building virtual worlds for a long time, making them social during the pandemic uh, since 2020. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, virtual worlds became categorized under the umbrella of the metaverse, thanks to Mark Zuckerberg. So he is like, um, yeah, he's, he's always coming back into the, uh, or in our company's history in 2014, we basically started because of his move by acquiring Oculus. Um, and then, yeah, he gave us a big push in 2021 by adopting the term metaverse. And then, yeah, I, I, I even wrote a book about the metaverse and how it's here to stay. Um, yeah, it's a real good book and it's even better than the movie. But now some say that the hype is over, but is it? Is the hype over or are we still building uh, behind the scenes? And if you take a look at some virtual world platforms like Fortnite and Roblox, for example, um, yeah, they're doing great, actually, even better and better than ever before. Uh, but then, yeah, 2023, I think we all know what happened in 2023 uh, or actually the end of 2022, but it was all over the, uh, the media and still is, actually. Um, it was the year of artificial intelligence, uh, especially the generative uh, AI. And again, we as an agency, we did a lot of brand activations or brand experiences using uh, generative AI or AI in general. Uh, we built digital humans connected to AI, like AI virtual assistants. Um, but yeah, is the hype over? Probably almost in the media, in the press. Uh, but as a marketeer, you need to be looking forward to what's the next big thing. And I think um, we see the next big thing coming, uh, coming for 2024 and probably 2025. And it will be probably spatial computing, especially for brand owners, business leaders. That's something that we definitely need to look into. Um, of course, uh, the term was now coined by Apple, but actually initially coined by um, Magic Leap in 2017 already. But yeah, I think no mainstream audience is familiar with, with the company Magic Leap. But Apple, of course, they pushed the term. They launched their first uh, headset as a spatial computing device. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, if you, if you see what, what's happening now in the markets, um, most of the pieces of the puzzle of, are coming together because we, as a company, as Yonder, as innovation production studio, we believe that, um, that yeah, all the past hypes are coming together and we embrace the unknown. We believe that the future of content in general will be 3d immersive and gamified. We em embrace the unknown, the unknown, of course we have to. Uh, but a lot of our clients, a lot of our friends and family, they fear the unknown, um, especially now because it all it, it goes faster and faster. It seems like technology is really moving the gear up. But that's not something new because it's from, I think it's from all ages, from all times, that people fear the technology. So ever since the printing press or even earlier, people have resisted, have resisted new technology. And they were warning vulnerable young people of its potential corrupting powers. Um, yeah, today, 500 plus years after its invention, I think we know we uh, we now uh, we, we know we didn't had a fair chance at any kind of future or education even uh, without the ability the, the ability of having books or reading books. So it has been like yeah, people were afraid of it. But if you look uh, in the future, yeah. It was an uh, extreme added value to our uh, our lives and our future. Um, and it's often when new technology comes along, uh, some conservative people automatically flex their muscles. Uh, and when the hype is gone, then the critics rejoice. And we see here a tweet of uh, Tim Sweeney uh, reacting to an article of Business Insider. Should be a respectable um, online news magazine, uh, I think. But um, yeah, launching. Uh, an article with uh, rest in peace metaverse we hardly know yet it's more clickbait ish in my opinion than it is a, a valuable article and he responded tim sweeney by the way is the ceo of epic games epic games is the company behind unreal engine and fortnite as well um and then tim sweeney uh, replied uh, to the tweet with like hey the metaverse is dead let's organize an online wake 
so that we 600 million monthly active users in Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, PUBG, mobile sandbox and VR chat can mourn its passing together in real time 3D. It was a very good answer. Of course, the concept of the metaverse uh, as a whole, it's not here yet, um, but it's not because it's out of the media and out of the out of the press that the concept is that um, I think we fear new technology um, and it's often because we don't understand it. And I think that's also something that is happening now. There was something with the metaverse and uh, people uh, didn't understand what the concept of the metaverse was. And then that it's, then it's also a sign uh, that that concept is maybe not ready for mainstream adoption. Uh, but anyway, that's happening with AI as well, I'm afraid. Um, because yeah, it's going so fast and people think it's going to take over the world, we're going to lose our jobs and so on. Um, but yeah, we don't have to fear the unknown. I think we need to embrace the unknown. And technology is something that has been always there. Even today, we are, um, I think we are. Uh, everybody is a cyborg, and we know the term cyborg from science fiction movies um, or science fiction films. Uh, but that's nothing new. Um, it's something that's been there for ages. And a cyborg is basically a human being with both organic and mechanical parts, often enhancing natural capabilities or replacing lost functions. So tools can enhance our senses or improve a part of our body. Uh, and, and you don't have to look far uh, to come up with some examples. Think about hand and hammer or eyes and glasses. This is also yeah, technology that is enhancing our body uh, or smartphone and the human body. Like, for example, this guy said uh, once uh, Steve Jobs envisioned the iPhone as an extension of the human body. Um, so let's talk about evolution. Um, it's not because technology evolves that it always needs to replace something. Uh, it, it just often uh, opens doors, um, or it often opens doors for new opportunities. And I think that's a very important message because if you take a look at the evolution of transportation, at first we had the wheel, from the wheel became uh, the bicycle, and then the bicycle, the motorcycle, and then we had a car, but it's not because we have a car, which is the fastest, the safest uh, transportation, um, a way of transportation, that we don't use our bicycles anymore. Uh, a, bi a, a bike is very interesting for sports, but also to move uh, through the city, for example. Um, so it doesn't uh, need to replace something. And the same with the evolution of content. Um, at first, we had cave paintings. Um, then we had just paintings on a canvas. Uh, then we had photography, and then we had moving imagery. And still today, but it's not because we have moving imagery that we don't like photography anymore, or we don't like paintings anymore. It's just a new way of content exploration or consumption. Uh, but what is remarkable is that we live in a 3D world, so we have a sense of depth as humans, but the content that we, that, that we enjoy is most of the times is flat. Um, so that's an opportunity. And I think that's an opportunity that we see evolving through the evolution of computing, uh, because there, were three, there are three stages in computing or three phases. Um, first, we have the personal computing revolution. And we all know the desktop computers. Uh, we use them at home, we use them at work uh, to do heavy uh, processing uh, jobs like graphic design or whatever, or yeah. Um, but we use them at home or in an office. And a laptop is also from the computer, uh, fr from the personal computing uh, category. And we use them to work in a coffee bar, for example, or to give a presentation on the road at the client's office. Um, and then we saw the mobile computing revolution. And mobile, I, I think personal computing already disrupted a lot of how we were operating as a business, how we were communicating, how we were doing sales, uh, how we were doing marketing, uh, operations and as a whole. But then we entered the mobile revolution, um, first with the Blackberries, for example, the Windows phones, and then with the iPhone uh, and the Samsung phones, uh, the smartphones. Uh, and we use our smartphone for taking a selfie during a city trip, for example, to sending text messages to WhatsApp, um, or going on Instagram, calling an Uber, for example. And then we have the tablets, also part of the mobile computing era, to read a book, to watch a movie, or maybe to check the photos that you took on your city trip. Uh, and it's not because these platforms, uh, it's not because we had these new platforms that we are ditching the previous ones. They all, they are just more suitable for certain use cases. Take Uber, for example. I can now book an Uber on my computer, but it doesn't make sense to open my computer when I'm in the corner of the street. It's a mobile-first platform, but you can use it on other platforms as well. 
like a laptop or a computer, for example. Um, and now we're going towards spatial computing. And that's yeah, the category how Apple is uh, explaining it. They are, of course, king of the narrative. Um, and they talk about spatial computing, personal, mobile, spatial computing, and make, makes it a bit more compre uh, comprehensible for uh, a mass market. Uh, and then in the future, we will have glasses uh, probably as well. Um, so glasses, this is an example of the Ray-Ban story, Ray stories of Meta. Um, uh, but yeah, we are still not there in terms of te uh, technology. But what happened then to the metaverse? Um, and I think, yeah, of course, uh, Zuckerberg, uh, yeah, he, re he received a lot of um, dirt uh, because he was like a fan. Yeah, he, he was like a dreamer and not realistic and he was pushing it too far and it was not realistic. People were not interested in it. But if you take... If you look back to the, the moment in 2021, I think it was October, when he announced the, the name change of Meta, then this was literally the definition that Zuckerberg used to talk about the Metaverse. He talked about the fact that the Metaverse is a new virtual world to explore and a new dimension overlaying the old one. Basically, that's like a rebranding of virtual and augmented reality, maybe. But it's an embodied version of the internet where you're looking, um, looking at, where you're in the experience and not looking at it. So that's yeah. It becoming a, it's becoming clear that that he's talking about a more three dimensionalization of the internet, and then basically yeah, the metaverse is a life and persistent three D version of our internet, and that definitely makes sense um, because yeah, it's not limited to headsets. But if you take a look, what is happening now with spatial computing, how Apple is is uh, approaching it, three uh, D the three D fication of content and the internet as a whole makes total sense if you are in a headset but it doesn't have to limit it uh, to a headset uh, because for example today you can have you can catch pokemons on the street with your smartphone which is an augmented reality game uh, or you can go on roblox or fortnite on your computer or on your gaming game console so it doesn't need to limit it but for some use cases it just makes a lot more sense uh, and i think it brings a lot of opportunities for brands to explore this um to communicate, um, yeah, to start experiment with this, to start innovate uh, in this new field because it will be um, the next big thing. And people who had tested an, um, yeah, a Vision Pro already, I think, and, and of course the Meta Quest 3 as well, I think they can uh, confirm that this, this is an amazing device. Of course, we need a couple iterations more to hit the mainstream. But I think, in terms of Thinking about uh, brand campaigns and the way of communicating with your target audience in the future, I think you need to start that today. Uh, at least think about it. it. It gives a lot of opportunities to communicate or connect with your future audience. Um, so to wrap it all up, I think we should embrace the unknown. We are convinced of that uh, because it's just an opportunity. Uh, it brings adventure and growth uh, together. Um, it facilitates growth. Uh, it makes you think about the future of your brand and your company. Um, it, yeah, it offers possibilities. It offers opportunities. Unknown is new technologies, is innovation. It always brings new possibilities um, and urges you to look beyond the status quo. Um, and if and it also brings threats because if you overlook the unknown and you might find, uh, then you might find your business left behind. So if you ignore trends, if you ignore hypes. Uh, and you don't experiment with them, with them, it's possible that you will be left behind in the future. So I think that's the um, yeah the main message of this event. Like hey, we see a lot of hypes, a lot of trends in marketing and in business. Uh, you don't need to jump maybe on all of them, uh, but pick your battles. Uh, but be open to them, explore, experiment, um, and try and try to find the right way to communicate and connect with your target audience now and in the future.